Welcome back, guys. It's Garage Mods, but it's gonna be a different thing today because the internet has spoken. Check it out. The internet has spoken, and this is what they're asking for. They're asking for more content on this dude right here. Um, this is the Tiny Camper Kong, is when it started as, and of course I got my hands on it, nine foot awning that comes from Tiny Camper Co. But you can see all the stuff that I've done on the other side. Uh, outdoor lights, uh, standalone shop towers for uh, added suspension basically, hot water on demand, um, this front rack system, generator, AC in the box, Chinese diesel heater here. Um, I can show you guys all that, or I have a lot of videos on it already. And then of course, just the outside. I added a stereo system, Bluetooth, um, a vent fan system next to that light. And then of course, that's the Bluetooth stereo in that box right there. And then here's the kitchen area. This is the table uh, I generally use right here. It's made to be operated with the door to open or close. And there's the kitchen. It's a little dirty right now, but um, you can see this is what it is. It's nice. All my electrical controls there, inverter, 2001 inverter, and then of course more here. Shore power connects there. This is where my lithium is. You can see 600 amp hours of battery, uh, cabinet area. And then in this area here, I have battery storage. And then I have a 15 gallon uh, water tank right there. But anyway, that's it. So I just wanted to show you what these people want to see. And then of course I built the risers in the back to actually stabilize it. Uh, and this better gives you a shot of the uh, hot water system in there. And that's the Camp Lux, just so you know. Again, I have videos of this already out there. I've got videos of the suspension, everything I've done to this basically. If you want more, uh, please hit me up and I'll do an up, updated video of it. Uh, but hit me up in the comments and tell me what you want to see uh, or describe more and I can do that. As far as what we're doing today, this area right here. So. I'm having a little bit of tongue weight issue, and it's a, common, it's a combined issue. That being said, I love this setup here, um, but I really need to set up on him a swing out for the tire and everything else, and so that will kind of conflict with what this does and how it hooks up. So. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a double swing out. So all this stuff you see here, we'll remove, we'll remove the shelf, make it back to uh, the original. Uh, but then what we're gonna do is back here, we're gonna create a swing out out of the rear hitch. Now I'll still be able to use my pull, but off the bottom rail, I'm gonna build a swing out system. That way I can take the stuff that's on the front and transfer it to the back get some of the tongue weight off, and obviously give us more room for a swing out to open behind the Bronco in between the trailer and the Bronco itself. So let's try. So you guys can see, uh, it's kind of heavy, but I used to have, this was on the Raptor, and it was a dual, dual side swing out for a Ford uh, Raptor, D1, Gen 1. So I plan to salvage this, but I'm gonna change it quite a bit. So, the retaining stuff I'll change, this entire piece I'll change, but mostly, all I actually want uh, is the physical arm. So what I'm gonna do is cut everything off. We'll still use the base material, but this will be the bones. Okay, so I wanted to catch you guys up real quick. See what I'm doing. So I'm kind of cleaning up the old uh, manufacturing kind of that I was using it and how, how I used it last time and changing it. Anyway, you can see, so what I was doing just there is I was cutting all this off. And reason being is I, I used an a, a internal slip uh, to strengthen this piece and then welded it in. So what I did is I cut the weld off and just slucked it in a little bit. I'll still use a stud like this to go back in it and then weld again, but I needed a little bit more length, and so I wanted to cut this off smooth, get it done, get that piece knocked out, and then finish off cutting the rest of this, um, the stuff that I won't use. We'll just call it the stuff that I won't use. And so now that I'm at this point, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing, but just know that 
uh, right now the process is you're just gonna see me removing all this old material and then getting it ready to see the new mounting process. Sound good? Let's roll. Okay, so I just wanted to catch you guys up real quick. You can see how I took that whole riser center section out and I've just now made it one flat plane. That's because I do plan on putting a plate on top of this that'll butt up to the base of the trailer. But anyway, I'm just now taking it down, just cleaning it up, look at it when I need to. And then of course over here, this is where I need to do some of the major work because I'm gonna still use this. Uh, but I need to clean these edges off, clean it up again, and then get it ready to receive the piece of pipe that we'll use as the entire lateral. Now. I'm contemplating back and forth if I want to move the spare tire onto this and I'll show you why. So as we come around the corner, you'll see that this, this tire kind of hangs out, right? And, and it's not a big deal because it's not in the way, but since I'm going to go ahead and build this and it is going to definitely decrease some of my departure angle, I was considering adding the tire to it because if I'm going to bring it up, and raise it so that so that it's definitely not being affected by everything else. My thought was to um, put the tire on the back of the plate like this and then have room in the front of it and then the generator and the boxes. And I think that that's still achievable with the way it is. Reason being is I love being able to take a camp table like such, but you can see this that I made, okay? And so when I'm cooking and I have the door open, I put my utensils and my cook stove and everything here, coffee, and I cook from here. And this stores right there. And so I just set it in here. If I can take this tire and move it to the back, my thoughts are, do I have to continue carrying a spare tire if it's just gonna be two of us? Now, when we have the daughter and the dogs, and we have a lot of stuff to repair and put places, you know, it's kind of nice to have a, a secondary table, but wouldn't it be nice for me to be able to make a table in conjunction with this riser for the tire? Because it would be a flat table, basically in this configuration, just like the way this stows, and then essentially unpin it and it lays down. And then you've always, always got a table with you and it's a static table and you never, ever leave home without a table. And that would make things so much easier. So anyway, let's keep rocking. Lots to do. ready for um, kind of pre-assembly, but we're gonna have to go to the parts store because one thing I told you I was gonna have to buy is the lateral pipe. I think it goes laterally across here uh, because I don't have what I want. What I, want, what I do wanna use is I wanna use uh, three by two by three sixteenths. And the reason being is because I want it to um, be wide enough that I can use a center section for resting things against but then also uh, the strength portion of it. Now, the one thing I will say uh, is supposedly this thing will hold a thousand pounds. Um, I, have, I have bent one before. So regardless of how it happened, I have bent one. So keep that in mind. So you don't wanna go too, too long with that swing, right? But you'll notice that uh, what you guys are probably wondering is that I've got this uh, set up on an opposing access, how a normal suit would work. And the reason being is because remember, when I open my door to the camper in the back where the kitchen is, it opens this way and this is where my table is. Well, if it opened that way, it'd be right where my table is. So this way, I'll be able to open it up all the way out of the way. 
And so everything will be able to stay attached on it, set up however I need it. Uh, and, then, and then again, it'll be out of the way. And then so if I wanna bring it back this way a little bit, um, I can, but it's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal because I could even do something like open it up 90 degrees and have the big door open up against it and tie them together so the door's not moving back and forth with wind and create like a wind block. So lots of ideas from lots and lots and lots of days camping in the trailer and just camping in general for what would help. And so that's kind of where this is coming from. Anyway, let's keep rolling. Um, if you want to know anything like I'm using, the flap discs, um, things like that, ask in the comments and, and I'll get back to you with the, the grits I use, the grits I start with. I'll be tacking in the extension that goes in here. So let me move this out of the way so we have a little bit more light. We'll get it and we'll slide it in and see kind of how it looks for starters, right? Oh shit. It's really nice having a 270 awning and that nine foot awning on this trailer because it really does give you a lot of coverage. I was saying it really is nice to have a 270 and a nine foot because it gives you a lot of coverage. It gives you a lot of options how to set up camp. Generally the 270 and stuff like this is facing camp uh, or facing the campfire and whatever we're looking at because I can make coffee in the morning and look at the river or look at the mountains or whatever. Anyway, I digress. So let's get this made. And again, I just thought about that. But we'll kind of see how it works. No, I don't pin that. It's never been pinned. It's a decently weighty table. Uh, and so I've just never done it. It's always hung out just like that. So you can see inside that hitch, there's a whole lot of play. So that's something we'll have to figure out first. But essentially that's what we're looking at, which is what we want. Because again, now the swing We'll come out here and that'll give us plenty of room. And now I also know that with it sitting the way it needs to sit, it's not gonna interfere with the back of the door. And that was a big, big deal. Would it be far enough out that it wouldn't affect the door? And I think it will. Okay, so now that we've got it in, we've got it kind of got it lined up. What I'm noticing is there's some slot from the DOM tubing and in the actual hit, hitch itself. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and I'm probably gonna weld some flat washers on the top of the, the tongue that goes in. That way it'll keep it level in the hitch when you go ahead and uh, hook it up. Because what you don't want is, you know, your stuff traveling like this down the road. So let's knock that out real quick.
Here, let me come get you. Let me come get you. So I can kind of show you guys what's going on. How about that? We want to see up close. All right, so I wanted to show you this up close so you kind of see what I was talking about. So obviously we just, you know, nicely seem to be across both of these surfaces and of course down that one. I, I don't have a brush right now. I don't know where it is, I misplaced it. But anyway, you can see what I did with the flat washers. I just put them in there, I welded the bead in the center, like a rosette weld, and then smoothed them out. Kind of the same thing right here, obviously doing the same thing. And then again, right there. And basically what these do is they just achieve um, pulling out the gap between this thing. And so will it be tight to get in? Yes, but it will take away the slop and that's what we're working for. So let's keep rolling and let's get it back over there in that dude and then go from there. Okay, so now we've got uh, this guy cut and I cut it 62 and a quarter-ish long. That's longer than we'll need for that back bar, but I wanted to leave some room and there's no reason you shouldn't, right? So anyway, what we're doing is we're getting, we're getting down to where we're gonna be coping, okay? And so when you cope, let me get this adjusted so I can see better. Uh, when you cope the metal so that it associates um, with this piece of pipe here, you can see that it's got this half moon shape. All I did was take the actual carrier that's a, a new carrier. It's got a greaser in it, but this is where the bearings go and this is what actually rotates on the spindle. But you just put it on there and you can see, I just take it and get it to the very edge where each side marks both edges. And then I just draw a line. And then what we'll do, even if you don't have a hole saw or something like that to cut it, you could just make a bunch of cuts like this laterally here with uh, your cutoff blades and then come through here and cut them. And then once you've done that, you can kind of kind of grind it out nicely with a, um, um, a, a flap disc and it'll take care of um, the little bumps and ridges. Really, you're just trying to get it close, right? So you want to get it kind of in that ballpark, but it's not like it matters if it's not pert because it's thick enough metal that you can build that between the two pieces of metal and it'll work just fine. So let's get going on. Okay, let me kill this fan. Ugh. Sorry guys, it's still like 97 degrees here. But what I wanted you guys to see was, um, that's coping, see? Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I mean, remember, I haven't been working in months and months and months because of my, uh, because of my arm surgery, but you know, take a look at it and see what, what you think. That's kind of how it'll be associated, kind of something like that but I'm super happy with that. What do you guys think? Rusty, but it came out good. So now what I'll do is I'll line it up, put a level on it, make sure it's level, make sure that the coping cut is still level so that this cylinder is level and then we'll tack it in. Let's go. Okay, so you can see what we got going on here. We're laid out here. And basically what I did is I opened it in the 90 degree setting, right? And that would just give me the best way to support it and get it all tacked in where I needed to. So you can see that I am level there. Coming across, there's my coping. And then I'm gonna come across with this guy and I'm level right there. So right now, regardless of what the trailer's doing, on the hitch itself, we're level. So 
basically what I'm going to do now is tack it in place so I can swing it closed and make sure we look correct and make sure that it's doing everything it needs to do to operate. And then of course, from the old hitch, I had a couple other drill point entries. And so that's at another 90 plus 45. And then another is always pretty much all the way open. So again, I think this will work. And I think that I can still remove the spare tire from there, put it here laterally on this, on this part of the cage. It'll set down and come out this way. It'll come out 24 inches. So it'll be a 24 inch tray on this. It'll be um, a spare tire and then two five gallon cans, which is uh, diesel for the diesel uh, heater. And then uh, an extra gallon, five gallons of water, potable water. And then here will be the generator and then on this, or opposing that tire, the generator will be on this end. And then here in the middle will be my utility boxes that have all kinds of tools and tools and electrical supplies, just the stuff that you need to have with you all of them. So let's get cracking, man. Hello, I had to get you guys on the stand, check this out. Anyway, so um, what you see there is zero, what you see there is spot on level. And the funny thing is, it was a roll of black tape that created an exact uh, level surface. So what I'll do is obviously I'll take the measurement of that and add probably an eighth to it because there's probably a little sag in that tape. But I'll, I'll create, um, a spacer built out of that and so when it comes into the uh, locking mechanism it'll rise and come into it and it'll be about uh, what would you call it it looks like an inch inch and an eighth uh, taller and so as you swing open swing closed it should swing right into the gate capture and uh, this gate capture I'm gonna build uh, via one I saw from I believe it's overland on a budget the guy is, he's super talented and, and, and I know he wouldn't say so, but he's super um, engineering uh, based with his thinking. The way he develops things is how an engineer would think, just very simply and that's pretty neat. So we'll, we'll use his capture if we can. The one caveat to it is this is a little thicker, uh, so it'll be neat to see how I come together with the piece that we need. So this will be cut a little shorter because it won't be this length. Um, it'll actually be probably about this long, okay? So about 61. And the reason being is it'll, it'll, it'll slide right into the capture. And so the handle will be here, the top of the capsule is where it'll lock in. And so it'll be completely secure and locked in.
So you can see uh, off camera, basically what I did is I just made some caps. All you do is take this same pipe, put the pipe on top of it, trace it out, and then cut it with your cutoff wheel. It's super easy. Put it in the middle, then I just welded it flush. And then I went ahead and built the capture and put it on here. And you can see that it's just a, a four inch piece of pipe, four inch by two inch, right? And so how this capture works is it just does that, okay? And what'll happen is I'll weld a cap on top here and then those brackets will go up like this, the handle, it'll go up like this, clip down and clip like that. And that'll secure this into the uh, tire swing and it shouldn't have any movement whatsoever. Um, I left a little gap here because you want to let some of the moisture that gets in here run out. You don't want it completely as tight as you can get it because it will capture some moisture in there and you want it to be able to go ahead and uh, basically dry out in its own. Uh, other than that, we're rocking and rolling. I want to get this capture completed, so I just need to cap this and then I need to go ahead and fully weld at that end over there and then we'll start on the uh, the basket. We'll call it the basket. And I'm guessing it's going to be about 24 inches deep, something like that. But I, it's going really well, and I'm, I really like it, actually. I think it's going to work well. Let's roll! Okay, so you can see, we just ran over with some easy beads. You're not trying to build these things up. You kind of want them to lay down kind of flat in between the two surfaces. That way there's less to grind. And it's not a load bearing piece. It'll have the, clisp, the clamp onto it for the locking portion. But other than that, that's it. But this is more sturdy than you need to be. Um, but looks good. We'll go ahead and finish the other rail side. And then uh, we should be done with this portion of it other than welding in this thing uh, here, the cap here. So let's rock and roll, yeah? Okay, you can see, all we did is we came in here with a big fat bead, right? We wanna make sure that there's no question of the attachment here. Looks good, consistent beads, one solid bead all the way down, one solid bead all across, the other side's the same way. Now that we've done this, um, all we have to do is do around the base of that guy and then we're ready, right? So, that being said, I hope you're kind of learning some pretty simple little nuances to make this kind of thing work uh, without having to have a shop and all the shop tools and the big brakes and the presses and stuff. You can build some pretty good quality stuff just by using your imagination, watching some videos on YouTube and picking up some other ways to do it. But then again, you know, practicing your skill and this is how you do it right here. So I'm gonna throw a big fat bead on that dude right there. And other than that, we'll start working on the uh, tray. Okay, so we're back in the shop. Fast forward a week, I had to go back to work. But anyway, uh, today uh, we're gonna get on this dude here. So you can see the actual bracket came in and then we're gonna start on the shelf and see if we can't knock this out. I won't show it all to you because again, this is not a step-by-step, -step, but either way, you're gonna get the idea. So let's jump into it, right? 
Here we go. Okay, you can see it. I got the lateral arms out now. So those are 24 inches is what they're measuring. 24 inches on a 45. And so you saw what I did right here. Gave a little bit of gap for that. And then again, you want to make sure that when you line this up, that your pull is horizontal. You don't want it to be pulling at an upward or down angle. It allows it to snap in real good. And I'll let you guys give a listen. So if it doesn't make this kind of snap, then you know that you need to adjust the height. You hear that? So it pulls it in, and once you get past a certain part, the tension on this draws it in. So you know that it's not just gonna wanna break free. We still will design some kind of little uh, latch key or something, and that way you pull it and then pop the handle. That way, for some reason, this were to crazily come loose and break off and then come swinging out, it doesn't swing open into traffic and take out a car or something. Now it would stop, because there are uh, three points over there, hopefully that the pin would stop, but it may not, you know, and so I wanna make sure that I put a secondary safety in there for that reason. So let's keep dropping on. What I want to tell you is, so I just got done with that. You'll see it in the in the video. Uh, but I just got do, done putting the uh, laterals on. And so, you know, spend time cutting your 45s to make sure that they come together like they should. But then all you gotta do is tack it together. But y'all see in, in the sped up video that I was using a jack to kind of hold it and manipulate it. Well, always go back and check your level before you continue on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and weld these both in and then it's time for the caged floor. So do me a favor, check and check and check again. That way we know we're level, right? So go right back to here. So we'll check it in, set it on level again. Make sure you keep everything on a square sensor situation while you're working through it and you'll never end up messing your project up. made some good progress uh, and I'll show you now so you can see we've got the two braces in and then we basically spot welded all the way across wherever we could down across here all the fronts and then of course on the two center supports this should be more than enough to support any of our weight that right there is expanded metal done in eighth inch, and it's gonna be pretty dang strong. So we're close, guys. All I really need to do is put the tire carrier on uh, and then show you what it looks like. I probably won't cover painting, sanding and painting in this video. You guys have seen me do it a hundred times. So let's go ahead and get that piece done and then we'll sit back and take a look at the final product. Hey. I can't wait for you to see it. I'm super happy. Check this out. All right, here it is. What do you think? So that jack's holding it right now because it's a little offset of weight in front to back, but God, is it good. Man, I love it. So now 
everything's low, no lifting things above my head. Um, and I think it's really gonna work. I will show you this. Um, I threw a chain through the class because I use this to, for my slide-in table and I thought, heck, it's sitting here. So I take this up and put it in my slide-in table when we can't, but I figured, hey, it's just chilling here. We'll throw that in. And if this ever tries to come loose, at least this will kind of stop it uh, from coming completely off this, just to fail safe. I put a handle on for loading it just so it goes into that capture real easy. But anyway, I am super stoked. Uh, the craziest thing I'm happy about is watch this, guys. Ooh. Hey, after loading it all, getting it all built, look at that. Are we excited about that? That's what I'm talking about, constantly checking your work. Anyway, I hope this shows you that you guys can do this. It's not a hard process if you take your time. Anyway, I'm in love with it. I think it'll make a huge difference aerodynamically, um, ease of access, and, and plus, it was just a pain in the butt getting everything up above you. Was it nice to have that rack up there? Yes, because I got to carry extra stuff. But this shows you what you can do. Uh, and it gives you options. And now, if I'm going anywhere crazy and it's just gonna be me and I'm not taking the girls, I don't need all this stuff right here. This is all extra stuff that I take, extra water, extra diesel for the heater and all that stuff. I can remove this rack out of the hitch and we're still good to go. We haven't made anything um, constant. So I just figured I'd show you, it's something you guys can all do. And especially once you start beginning welding and slowing through the process and going through the process, not slowing, going through the process, you'll realize these are things and projects that are easy for, for even beginners to do. Anyway, I appreciate you, and I know this is a little bit long, but I wanted to show you kind of as many processes of it as I could. Um, this is some more stuff we're gonna be doing in the trailer. There's a lot of people that have been asking for it, so I'm gonna do it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting me, and uh, get your groove on, man. Get out in the shop and start building things. Peace. This is my time. I'm on the rise. Can't hold me down. I'm too fly. This is my time. Ready to shine. Brighter than all of the lights. Cause when it's game time. Seconds away and the game's on the line. There ain't no doubt in my mind. Beating the buzzer like. This is my time. This is my moment. You better bet that I'm on it. Ready and set. I'ma own it. Blast it to ten, then keep going. There ain't no coasting. I never settled on play. Putting the kettle to flame. I go 100 all day. Foot on the pedal, no brakes. Ten, nine, paid on my dues, waited in line.